Despite the ongoing legal battles, Starship remains the busiest and most active spacecraft at Starbase. Notably, Super Heavy Booster 12 has undergone a series of continuous refinements, each aimed at ensuring a successful catch on the next launch. So, let's take a closer look at the advancements on Super Heavy Booster 12 and see how the company has been spending its time while waiting for the launch permit in today's episode of Alpha Tech. And thanks for joining us. Similarly to the relationship between Booster 7 and 8, Booster 12 is considered an upgraded, refined version of Booster 11. This similarity goes beyond design and reflects SpaceX's step-by-step -step development strategy. The successful flight of Booster 11 provided the company with a wealth of valuable data on booster performance. Based on this info, SpaceX implemented several improvements to Super Heavy Booster. The first new feature we need to mention is the structural changes to the vehicle. Six new struts have been added to both the stabilization points of Booster 12, with three on each side of the socket where the stabilization arms lock onto the booster. Initially, it was speculated that this addition was to enhance the rigidity and stability of the structure. However, upon closer examination, they are actually the new deceleration points, intricately designed for Starship, showcasing SpaceX's groundbreaking thinking and optimizing the booster landing and recovery. During the landing phase, when Super Heavy is in a hover state, these new struts are expected to be the first point of contact with a chopstick system. Robotic arms designed to catch and stabilize the rocket. Their special position allows for a gradual and controlled deceleration process, minimizing direct friction between the rocket body and the catch arms. This improvement not only helps protect the surface of the booster, extending its lifespan, but also allows for more precise control during landing. Additionally, SpaceX has rapidly installed a number of new bumpers components on both tower arms, including 17 bumper segments. Unlike the old black pads, these look like ship steel with rubber inside and are resilient. These bumpers will create resistance to slow down any remaining velocity and align the landing. The way the new bumpers will act as brakes, I suspect, will also fill the gap between the tank and the newly installed landing struts on Booster 12. These elements will help align the catch pins, improving the chances of a successful catch and reducing the impact force between the arms and booster during the landing. Made of steel with a 45 degree angle at the top, they'll function as a guide so nothing gets stuck on blunt edges. You don't want the booster swaying between the chopsticks as they get close, so something compressible is needed to fill that gap. With the next flight, Flight Test 5 ahead of us, we're all hoping for a smooth launch and return. For SpaceX to accomplish this feat, many things need to go right. After a successful launch, the tower arms and their complex systems must remain operational. The booster itself will need to perform its mission perfectly and return in a controlled and precise trajectory. If any issues occur, the contingency plan is for the booster to crash in the ocean. At present, SpaceX engineers are focused on gathering as much data as possible. How long will it take for arms to close around a descending booster? How much force will they exert, and how much of that force can the booster withstand? These are crucial questions. As a result, during the waiting period for the FAA's permit, SpaceX is likely conducting more tests involving the hardware required for the catch task. Recently, on October 4th, alongside Booster 12, SpaceX did a stress test on the chopsticks and those bright orange bags we hadn't seen in a while. These bags are typically used to test the stress limits of big structures and equipment by simulating loads that may be too expensive or impractical to use solely for testing. The estimated load on each side is 250 tons, three bags on each side, two bags of 100 tons, and then one bag of 50 tons. Total loads 500 tons, about 100 tons more than the combined warehouse mass of both Starship and Super Heavy. The result of the tests are surely being evaluated by SpaceX, but it wouldn't be surprising if the chopsticks pass the test without needing further adjustments. By the time this video is released, I think they may conduct another test. Now, putting that aside, let's move on to the next feature of Super Heavy Booster 12, which concerns the engine production system. The most notable change is the removal of the black material that previously surrounded the base of the engine shielding in earlier versions. This alteration gives the booster a new appearance with the shiny steel rim now standing out on the protective cover. It remains unclear whether any other changes have been made to the engine protection system, suggesting SpaceX may be in the process of testing and evaluating the effectiveness of this change. Although this modification may seem small, it could hold technical implications. It may relate to improving heat dissipation, reducing weight, simplifying the manufacturing process, or even testing new materials. Another change is the redesigned Starlink terminal on Booster 12. These devices are mounted on the chines, protruding parts of the rocket body that cover the COPVs, that's composite overwrap pressure vessels. Instead of the circular dishes used previously, Booster 12 now features square dishes for Starlink terminals. 
This is an important step in SpaceX's ongoing design refinements. This change was not sudden. In fact, Booster 10 had already introduced this new design, but it was limited to the chines covering the CO2 tanks. Booster 12 marks a new progression by adopting this square dish design across all four chines, creating a unified and consistent design. The new shape of the Starlink equipment also helps optimize space on the rocket surface and may improve aerodynamics in certain flight conditions. The fourth new feature we observe with Super Heavy Booster concerns tanks and pressure control. In particular, there's a possibility that Booster 12 has been fitted with new tanks, although this has yet to be officially confirmed. The info comes from observations of Super Heavy Booster 15, where SpaceX added nine more tanks besides the landing oxygen tank. The primary purpose of this addition appears to be increasing liquid oxygen capacity, supporting the burn phase during the booster's landing. Interestingly, a similar set of nine tanks was spotted being transported into Mega Bay 1 while Booster 12 and Booster 15 were still inside, suggesting that aside from Booster 15, SpaceX could be installing these on another booster. It seems SpaceX is applying this improvement across multiple booster versions, not limited to just Booster 15. However, determining whether Booster 12 is equipped with these additional tanks is difficult as this change is not visible from the exterior of the vehicle. We need official confirmation from SpaceX to confirm this. But it remains an intriguing discovery for all of us. The next innovation on Booster 12 comes from the venting section. The object beside the alignment wedge has been removed. The fourth object beside the alignment wedge, its function remaining unclear, has been removed from the venting section of Booster 12. It's not known why this change was made, but it appears to be unnecessary. And finally, there's a modification to the Flight Termination System FTS on this booster. Booster 12 has been fitted with a new FTS casing on the liquid oxygen tank. The casing's positioned near the side supports for the liquid methane transfer tube and features a different design compared to the casing used on the fuel tank. Notably, this new FTS casing design also appears on the modified Flight Termination System of Booster 13, suggesting this is a deliberate improvement being applied across multiple boosters. While the exact reason for this change has not been disclosed, it's speculated that it aims to enhance the destructiveness of the FTS. Overall, these are the key changes we can observe in the Super Heavy Booster 12 compared to earlier versions. Every modification, no matter how small, is the result of careful learning and analysis from previous flights. In particular, the successful recovery of the rocket stages into the ocean during the four Starship launch gave SpaceX a wealth of valuable knowledge and data. This continuous improvement process not only brings SpaceX closer to achieving its goal of developing a fully reusable launch system, but also accelerates the pace of innovation in the whole space industry. However, this path is not without its challenges. SpaceX is facing some significant hurdles from legal and environmental regulations, which could potentially slow things down. There has to be a balance between innovation and compliance with safety and environmental regulations. Government agencies play an important role in ensuring that the development of the space industry progresses safely and responsibly. It's important for these agencies to recognize the importance of innovation and find ways to support companies like SpaceX while still upholding necessary safety and environmental standards. This will not only drive the growth of the space industry, but also bring long-term benefits to society, from advancements in communication technology to expanding our understanding of the universe. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.